Hey everybody, this is Jennifer. I'm coming to you with another sales update video. Um, before I get started, you may hear little kids screaming because my uh, neighbor's kids are outside having a pretty good time, so <laughs> they've been a little loud lately. Um, but there are also a couple of things before I get started on the sales update that I just wanted to go over really quick because some of it might help you. Um, I just wanted to um, say the first thing is uh, this is for everyone on the, the East Coast. Uh, remember the storm that we had in March? I don't know if any of you were affected uh, by it slowing down your, your delivery time, um, where you kind of got dinged on eBay for a, uh, a late arrival. Um, but I did. Uh, even though I went and put my store on vacation for those two days, it, the storm was Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, in March, I uh, I shipped on Monday, and when I shipped on Monday, one of the packages went within Pennsylvania. Uh, it caused a delay because for two days it couldn't move. Um, what happened was when I saw it appear in April um, that I had this uh, late arrival, I contacted uh, eBay, and I went over the fact that there was a um, a post on a page from eBay saying that they were going to forgive that there was there was a storm and you know to be careful or about your you know shipping your packages out and however that they were going to forgive late packages that were shipped at this time because obviously we don't have any control over it it did take me an hour to get through with them because I don't know if you guys have ever called eBay uh, I, I think it's a call center in the Philippines I'm not sure so there was a little disconnect um, and he wasn't sure what storm I was talking about. And then at one point he says, well, can you prove it? Uh, can you send me a link to, um, an article on the internet? And I was like, what are you talking about? I said, you guys have, have a post yourselves that, that basically talks about the storm and it's dated. I said, so, you know, that should be all the proof you need is that you are confirming it yourself. And once I directed him to that post, he checked it. And they actually did remove that late arrival. So if if you did get um, a ding from eBay because there was a delay package, you can call them and have it removed. All right. The next thing is, this happened twice in like two months. I had um, somebody pay for an item, and immediately after paying, send me an email and say, "No, no, 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 I do not want this." And what happens is when I went to cancel the item, eBay sent me an instant email saying, oh, we're unable to return their payment. Um, try going to PayPal and doing it yourself. And when I went to PayPal and tried to do it myself, PayPal uh, said there's something wrong with their card. We cannot do it. So this does leave a problem. You don't want to ship it to them because they're saying they don't want it. And you know that's going to cause a problem. Um, you can't refund the money. So it's looking like you're, if you don't ship it, it's looking like you're keeping the item and keeping their money. So what happened in both cases, um, you have to send them a payment directly. So basically get the email from the payment they sent you, and then you have to, for the same amount that they sent you, refund it. And then you have to call eBay and make sure that they understand what has happened and what's transpired and what needs to be done. Because they will contact PayPal, they will confirm that payment was directly sent. Um, I had one go on a lot longer than the other. The other one seemed to be rectified a lot quicker. I, I'm assuming that depends on who you're dealing with at eBay. Um, but both were in my favor. And the last one, actually, after I sent her the payment, um, she actually then even tried to do like a, a charge back with PayPal to get the original payment re returned to her as well. So she accepted my payment and then tried to get the other payment return to her. And PayPal did stop it. They did not let it go through. And um, on the eBay also sent me a notification that they do not back payments that are made this way uh, by buyers and they don't protect them. So basically they canceled the transaction and they also canceled any ability for them to leave me a negative feedback. So I just wanted to kind of let you know if it, since it happened twice to me, that if it hasn't happened to you already, it might come up and, you know, you can keep it in mind that, you know, you heard about this before. And the last thing I want to tell you was I had a return 
no, well, it wasn't a return. It was more a complaint on Etsy. And it was the first time I ever had a problem on Etsy. Um, and the lady was not quite all there. Um, she basically sent me an email that was only pictures. It was a, a wicker Pyrex basket. So it's a basket you put the Pyrex glass into. And it was vintage. And like most vintage items, there's going to be issues, you know. So there was a little bit of wear on the side and there was a little bit of staining on the cork bottom and both were shown in the last two pictures and both were like fully described in the item description. And all I received from this lady were pictures that were basically duplicates of the last two pictures that I had in my auction. So I, I'm looking at it going, okay, she's showing me what I showed her. So I don't quite understand. So I wrote her and she basically went off saying, you know, it's not as described and and I went back and said, this is exactly as described. You're actually showing me my own pictures in a way. And um, she said, well, I basically finally admitted she didn't ever look at the auction. She didn't. She only went by the tiny little thumbnail that she looked at, never clicked into the auction, never looked at the five pictures, never read the item description. And when I asked her to do so, she responded, why should I go look at something that I never looked at in the first place? <laughs> so what do you say to that? I did tell her she could do a return. So I was trying to kind of meet her halfway. And then she says to me, well, I'm going to pay for the return. And I was like, no, I kind of drew the line there. Like I just kind of had enough. Um, so yeah, I am kind of risking a negative by doing that. But you know, I, like I said, I just kind of had enough. Um, so she said she was going to contact Etsy and she was going to tell them, you know, about like, you know, how this wasn't as described. And I said, well, go right ahead. I said, because unlike you, they're actually going to read the item description and look at the pictures. They're not going to just go by your word. And for some reason, by me saying that, all communication stopped. So this was going back five or six emails. She stopped talking. So uh, I did contact Etsy because, like I said, this is the first time I had a problem. And I know how eBay is. eBay is really rough. Um, I was just, I wanted to know what they would do. Um, basically, I got a form letter back. And it, on the most part, it said, this is your business. You want to do returns? Do returns. If you don't, that's your business as well. Um, uh, as far as her stating that she was going to do a chargeback with uh, the credit card, card company, which is what she stated, she's, they said, as long as you describe the item, use the pictures, and stated what your return policy is, we will protect your money. So that is way different than eBay. And it's probably something you should know. Um, don't go by what I just said alone. I would, if you really want to know, contact them because they obviously do get this a lot and they have a very long form letter that explains everything and they will probably send it to you. So you'll have that information on hand. And it's good to know when you have a problem, like, you know, how you are protected. So that's all I wanted to say, because I thought that might be useful to some of you. All right, I'm getting started on the sales. The first item I have is a uh, pair of limited dress pants. They were brand new with tags. I got them at the Salvation Army. I paid full price of $7 and they sold for 30. Uh, again, I say this in all my videos, the price I'm giving you is the price, including shipping, whether it's free shipping or not, I'm giving you the total price they paid, including shipping. All right, the next item is a Misty Harbor trench coat. I picked this up at the Goodwill 50 cent sale and it sold for $33.69. Now the Misty Harbor, I've actually sold, I think it's been about three and all of them have been between 25 and $35. So although this isn't very well known, at least it wasn't to me, this does sell well. So you can look for these coats. All right, this is a pair of New Balance women's walking sneakers. Um, they were in excellent shape. They were in really good shape. Um, they did take uh, several months to sell, but I paid $5 and they were purchased for $32.19. Okay, the next item is a FAO Schwartz um, plush line. I picked this up at at a church sale, it was $2 and it sold for $27.19. Okay, this is a women's Ralph Lauren cardigan sweater. Um, it kind of look like a, uh, looks like it's a men's, but it's a women's. Um, if you're new to selling clothes, the women's, so I think ladies left, the buttons will be on the left if it's a ladies. So this was a ladies. 
um, I paid six dollars um, at the Goodwill and it sold for forty nine dollars and seventy four cents. This is a Danny and Nicole um, coat dress. The only reason I picked it up is that it was 50 cents um, and it was kind of unusual looking. It has like a leopard collar and it's, uh, oh, I, put, I said double beasted. <laughs> it's a double breasted um, coat. So I, it was very clean. So I picked up for 50 cents and it sold for 16 and it was extremely light and it shipped first class mail. Okay, this is a pair of Talbot's Capri jeans. Again, these were 50 cents at the Goodwill and they sold for $17.20. And this is a women's Ann Taylor dress. Um, this again was 50 cents and it was beaded around the neckline. And I really thought I was going to get more for this, but I had it for a while. And eventually I just took a best offer of $10. It's your first class mail. So I made about, I would say about $5 on it. Okay. This is a pair of Clark's mules. It was half off at the Salvation Army for $3 and it sold for $25 and 74 cents. And this is a pair of Croft and Barrow men's pants. They were brand new with tags, which is the only reason I picked them up. They were 99 cents at the Salvation Army. And I'm pretty sure I had them for over a year. Um, I finally took a best offer of $11.19. Okay, this is a women's horny toad um, shirt. It was new with tags. And horny toad it is a pretty good seller. I never heard of it before oh, since it was new. That's the only reason I looked it up. And I paid a dollar for this at the Salvation Army and it sold for 12. And I think shipping was only like $2 and 60 cents, super late. Okay. This is and one, A and D one polo shirt. Um, I'm not sure why I even picked it up. Maybe it was just the size. It was 2XL and clean and it was a dollar at the Salvation Army and it never sold. So I kept lowering it and eventually I sold it for $9 and 74 cents. Okay, this is a Woolrich cardigan, um, a zipper front, and it was really nice. Um, it was 50 cents, but I missed a flaw at the Goodwill. So I got it home. I thought I was going to get like 30 for it. Um, but even with the flaw, it was just a little pull on the hem. It sold for $17.19. Okay, this is a Coldwater Creek jacket. And what is my biggest mistake is that I did not use a black background. So it kind of just blended into the back. Uh, this should have sold better than it did. And my second mistake is I went from uh, free shipping and then I was like, it wasn't selling, it wasn't selling. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll just lower the price and add the shipping because I sometimes play with that. And I lowered the price and forgot to add the shipping. So I only sold this for $8. So basically I just made my money back, but Coldwater Creek is a good name. I usually sell it pretty well, but between the picture and just messing up the auction, you know, but it's going to happen. You just kind of move on. All right. This is a men's polo Ralph Lauren cashmere uh, cardigan. Now, normally I, I sold this for $15 um, and it was only a dollar at the Salvation Army, but normally you can get a little bit more. It was the size. It was a small. So it's a little harder to sell small, so I just let it go for 15. Okay, this is a Bromley leather coat. And I would say I had this for about two years. And I tried to sell it for less. I tried to include shipping and then free shipping and did everything. And I just relisted it. And um, I had it out for 30. And I was running big sales on it, just trying to get rid of it. And I relisted it and then somebody bought it for 30. So I only paid a dollar for it at the Salvation Army. So in all honesty, if you can, if you have a lot of space and you want to hold on to things, you can get more money for it. So it depends on how you want to do things. You want to hold on to them or do a quick turnover. It's kind of up to you. Okay. This is an Eddie Bauer women denim shirt and they actually get a decent amount of money. Um, this was at the uh, Goodwill. It made it to the 50 cent sale, which I'm kind of surprised. And it had pearl snap buttons. And it sold for $32.19. So these Eddie Bauer shirts, they do sell pretty well, the denim ones. And this is a women's, um, the brand name isn't important. Uh, 
Oh, it is important. It's J. Joe. Wow, I didn't have that in the, the title. Okay. See, <laughs> you know, when you do too much, you just like make these major mistakes, but don't beat yourself up about it. Just to move on. You know, in the end, it doesn't really add up to a lot. So I didn't put that in the title, but there was a big mistake on it anyways. It's missing this um, flap right here. So I picked this up. I love anything that's boho or hippie or anything like that. Um, but it was missing the flap on this pocket. Um, so I put it out uh, really cheap. It only cost uh, $2.50. And even with that missing flap, it went for $17.19. Okay, um, here is a pair of Chico red pants. Um, they were a size four, which is a nice size, and they were brand new. And I paid $4.50. And they had giant roses all over them, so they were really extremely bold. And it sold for $22.39. And this is another Eddie Bauer. Now, Eddie Bauer normally, like, I, I don't, like, pick up sweaters or shirts uh, ever. I, it, it never really sells very well for me. But usually the jackets are okay, and obviously that denim shirt was okay. Um... This was half off at the Salvation Army for $4, and it sold for $22.20. And this was interesting. This is a Puma Ferrari vintage uh, jacket. It's got the Ferrari logo. That's the tags. Um, unfortunately, it was a small. It was, oh, an extra small. I probably could have gotten more for it, but I had it for a couple of months. I paid... Uh, $3 at the Salvation, and it's sold for $19.99. And this is a pair of YMI uh, denim shorts, and it's not the brand. Um, it's the fact that it was brand new with tags, and it's the fact that it was a size 24. And they were half off for $3.50, and they sold for $23.19. Okay, this is a Tigger jacket. Um, it was a men's or a woman's. Oh, I put unisex. Okay. So obviously I, I wanted to appeal to both. So this was, it was very clean. It was a nice jacket. I had actually seen it. I think it was around $8 at the uh, Goodwill. And I was just kind of like, oh, I don't know. I kept leaving it there. And believe it or not, it actually made it to the 50 cent sale, which I was shocked. I, I was certain someone would pick it up. Um, so I picked up for 50 cents and it sold for $27.19. And this was great. Um, this was at the Goodwill. Um, it's a, I believe, yeah, it's a men's, a Harley Davidson uh, denim trucker style jacket. And what often happens there, they put these jackets, these men's jackets in with the women's jackets. And so I always find these really great men's jackets in there. And um, it was $7.50, and this sold, um, including shipping, $74.49. So Harley-Davidson is awesome. Anything you see, I pick up, unless it's in really bad shape, almost anything that has Harley-Davidson on it. Okay, that's all I have for Et um, eBay right now. So Etsy, uh, let me go over here. Oops. I don't know what's happening. I'm having a little glitch. Oh, there we go. Okay, this is, I just want to make sure this is working. Okay, yeah, this is um, an Avon American Eagle pin. Um, I picked this up for 25 cents at a church sale and it sold for $10.02. And this is a, I don't know how to pr pronounce it. Kenzel, Kenzel, not sure. Um, it's a ceramic daisy clock. Um, this actually had some cracks in it. So I paid for it. I saw the cracks, but it was just interesting enough. I paid $4 for it at the Goodwill. And even with the cracks, it sold for $20.60. Okay. Oh, sorry about my computer. It's kind of skitzing. All right. This is a pewter unicorn. I uh, paid 50 cents at a church sale for it and it sold for $13.75. And this is a 
this is um, this is a pair of um, a set of six vintage hammered brass napkin rings. I picked up um, a big bag of napkin rings at the uh, Goodwill. I think there were four sets in there and um, it was four dollars. So each set cost a dollar and this sold for twenty two dollars and twenty four cents. So there's nothing special. I don't think there was any name on it. It was just uh, hammered brass. And the last thing I have is a brass back scratcher and shoehorn. <laughs> like, where are you going to get that? Okay, I don't, do I have thing? There it is. Um, it's 22 inches long and it was only a dollar. So I didn't even look it up. I just picked it up because it, like, it was really strange. And I think it sold like in a week and it sold for $22.39. So look out for those unusual items. All right, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and your sales are going great and I will see you next time.